we have some C source code for a compiler project. We're now going to scan that code and auto-generate some structure charts so we can understand this organizational structure of the code. We'll start by launching the Mac Translator tool and bringing up a dialog where we can select the folder of code that we want to process. And step two, we'll add a list of all the folders that contain the code. In this case, we're just going to be processing that same folder of code, although we could have a list of hundreds of different folders of source code that we want to scan. And step three, we want to go from C source code to a structure model. Step four, we want to scan all files in those folders with a .h or .c extension. And finally, we're going to click a build button that is going to uh, start processing that code. It's going to take a few minutes as it scans through all the source code in this project. And at the uh, end of the process, we'll end up with a uh, description of the next steps to take those files that it has, that information that it has extracted from the code and import it to generate graphic models. Now that we've processed our code with Mac Translator, we're going to launch Mac A and D to generate graphic diagrams. We'll start by creating a new project. Let's select the same folder that we used for the source code to hold our project documents. And we're going to need a dictionary and a structure model document. And the programming language being used is uh, C. And we'll go ahead and create the new project documents. Once the project documents are created, we can click open. It'll be at the top of our list, and then we can open those documents. And you'll see we have two empty documents, a dictionary document and a design document into which we'll generate our structure charts. So let's start by importing the dictionary information collected by Mac Translator. From the report menu, we'll just do import dictionary, brings up a dialog, and we want to uh, select the document that was generated by Mac Translator. It's in this folder, and it's called dictionary.rp. And we'll go ahead and import that information. And within a moment or so, you'll see it's imported a list of dictionary entries for all the modules that were identified by Mac Translator within our source code. Next, we want to uh, generate a structure chart from the information. And we do that by doing an import childless command. In this case, we note that the main function is called main. Uh, if we didn't know that, we could actually set a checkbox and Mac A and D would help us to identify the main function of the thread of execution or if there's a multiple threads of execution, it could identify each one so we could create separate structure chart for a large uh, multi-threaded environment. We're going to, uh, again, click the pick button and we're gonna locate the childless.rp file that was produced by Mac Translator. And during the import process, everything could be imported to one giant flat diagram, although that if there's a lot of modules, that could be a very complex diagram. So it's nice to actually partition that into a stack of diagrams by allowing a, a module that fans out and calls more than X children to be pushed down to a child diagram. And there's an automated way of doing that by setting this checkbox and the uh, criteria on how many child modules needs to be below the calling module before it gets pushed down to a child diagram. So once we have our parameters set the way we want, we'll click OK and it will start the import process. Now this may take a few minutes depending upon the size of the code as it's generating diagrams uh, from that source information that it's collected. So within a couple minutes now, we've uh, imported our dictionary and generated a stack of diagrams to represent this source code. Uh, starting with the main diagram, we can see the main function that starts the thread of execution. That main function calls a couple of other functions, the init scanner function, the get token function, and the program function. 
the init scanner function calls init page header and open source file functions. Uh, we see on this diagram that some modules are represented with a little icon in the corner. That indicates there's a child diagram linked to that module. For example, on the get token, if we double click on that module, it takes us down into the child diagram and we see that starting at the top we see the get token module and all the functions that it calls and so on. We can uh, shift double click up a diagram level or double click down a diagram level. If we want to look at the source code for a specific module, we can just select it and click the uh, code button and it navigates to the exact source code file that contains the source code of that function and links us right to the spot in the file that has the implementation of that module.